Hey, it's Caitlin from Really Big Plant. Thank you so much for joining me. I ordered a whole bunch of plant stuff. Like 90% of the stuff in these boxes are plant related items. I got a couple of plants from Home Depot that were featured in my last shopping video. I actually went back for them. I wasn't actually planning on filming this video today. I've got this plant here and you might recognize this. I pointed out this philodendron Florida in my video and then was editing it and had super, um, I guess whatever is the opposite of buyer's remorse, non-buyer's remorse. <laughs> that I didn't come home with this plant. And then some of you guys were like, I can't believe you didn't buy that Florida in the comments. And I was like, you know, you're right. So the other day I was just having a really bad day and not feeling super well. I sent my husband back out to Home Depot to go buy me some plants. Cause I'm like, I need you to go see if that Florida is still there for me. Um, <laughs> So he went back to the store and he came home with this plant, which was so amazing and I feel so happy to have it now. So yeah, I have this philodendron Florida green and it even came in this cute little pot. I don't know, I'm just loving this whole thing. It was only um, $14.98, $15. And my husband also came home with some other stuff on that trip. I sent him to go look at these pothos because, okay, there's this section that I cut out of my video, but I'm gonna show it to you now where I saw these plants and I thought they were pothos and I thought they were really overpriced pothos and I like totally bashed them and then my husband like walked up next to me and was like, those look terrible. And then I just like panned my camera onto something else. And when I was editing this footage, I was looking at the plants and I realized that Something was going on with the pothos in my video that I didn't notice when I was in the store that these, <laughs> I think these are actually kind of special pothos. Like maybe they were something different. They all just looked a little bit like the coloration was a little bit weird. And it occurred to me that when, when you notice something like that, a lot of times they are something different. And lo and behold, Epipremnum pinatum. See, this is, how much is this? <laughs> Don't pay $10 for a four inch pothos, you guys. You can, you can find this somewhere else. Do these, do these leaves look kind of cool? <laughs> he said he thinks it looks unhealthy. Yeah, maybe they're just unhealthy and expensive for no reason. There were regular pothos that were the same price, golden pothos, Epipernum aureum, but these are Epipernum pinatum. It's just a different species of Epipernum. So golden pothos and the enjoy pothos and the marble queen pothos, all of those plants that typically get called pothos are Epipernum aureum. And then they are varieties, cultivated varieties of that particular species. There's a very similar plant that is now being more commonly sold as a house plant and reached rare plant status for a little while, the Epipremnum pinatum. And this comes in a variety that is both white variegated and yellow variegated and um, I believe that I have one of the yellowish variegated ones here. One of the things that I have been wondering is if this is just a pothos that they put a different label on and I'm not gonna be able to tell until this plant gets slightly bigger. One of the main differences between the Epipernum pinatum and the golden pothos is that the Epipernum pinatum um, tends to fenestrate a little bit sooner than the golden pothos or will develop these tiny little holes in the leaves. Anyway, we're gonna see. And then one more plant, there was a fishtail palm that I've looked at like a couple times in my past few shopping videos that's been at this Home Depot for a long time. And it's been looking worse and worse every time I see it, but the price hasn't come down. I told him to go into the Home Depot and ask <laughs> if they could give him a discount on that fan palm. They told him he could have like $20 off, which would still put the plant at like $100, which in my opinion is way too much. So he didn't buy it. But because he was asking for a discount on an obviously bad plant, another person who was working in the plant section at Home Depot, who I guess was cleaning some things up, came over to my husband to ask him if he wanted a piece of garbage. <laughs> Which, how did they know? If you've been watching my channel, you know I love trash plants. So they, they offered my husband this totally broken pot bamboo that I have not even taken out of this bag since he brought it home and they just let him have this for free because they were about to throw it away. Let me see what is in here. Kind of cute, but yeah, this pot is destroyed but the saucer's intact. What is salvageable? Because I, I worked in lots of plant stores and I would get to take home broken pots or like pay a very small price for them. And so my evaluation criteria is usually, is there at least one direction where you can turn the pot and you can't tell it's broken? Then it qualifies for coming home. Um, but this pot is totally destroyed. So I'm gonna throw this out. This by the way was $12.98 before it broke. This is just two pieces of bamboo plant that have been bent together into a little heart shape. 
Anyway, I would never have bought this, so <laughs> I guess it's just kind of exciting that I have it. I do think that one of them, this one is dying, like the tip has died off. And I think as it continues to die back, like this whole thing might die and I might just be left with one like little shepherd's crook bamboo. <laughs> This thing is kind of falling out of its pot. It mainly just needs some water. It's bone dry, so I'm just gonna water it. <laughs> kind of seemed like that got so top heavy that it just like fell over. It crashed the whole pot to the ground. Something that has happened to quite a few of my plants on my channel. Okay, let's open things. I've got an insane number of boxes over here. Yeah, okay. So let's see, what did I start with? This is for hanging plants in. For hanging plants, it's got like a really long tube so you can squeeze water into things that are really high up. Um, Okay, so do you see what this is? This is a squeeze bottle that squirts water all the way up here. It's got a valve here because when you have a hose this long pumped full of water, there needs to be a little bit of an air exchange for after you squeeze, it needs to suck air back in. So if it didn't have this intake valve right here, it would suck the water back from this end. It's talking. <laughs> okay, let me fill this up, I'll show you. So just put some water in here. And then what happens is, I've got this long hose. You know, honestly, these connections feel like they're not super tight. Why do I feel like there's about to squirt water everywhere? Okay, moment of truth, let's see. Can you see? Squirt this into here. All right, uh, okay. <laughs> this did not work as well as I thought it would. Basically, this is designed for like, if you have hanging plants, you can water them without taking the plant down and just like hold this up and put this nozzle into the, into your plant pot and water them. But I don't know if you saw how many times I just squeezed this bottle and this is the amount of water that came out. Your hanging plants probably want more water than this. Like this is a tool that you can use for when you're feeling like you really don't want to take the plant down and the plants just desperately need any kind of drink. You can use something like this, but you're going to be standing there <laughs> squeezing on this bottle for probably longer than you would want. <laughs> In my mind, this works like a million times better. Anyway, it still functions. It doesn't appear to be leaking anywhere down this pole. And I do like that there is this, <laughs> this valve. <laughs> I'll link this in my Amazon store if you want to purchase this. I don't know if I recommend it. I just wanted to try this out. I mean, I'll probably use this like for my lazy watering, but like very little water comes out when you squeeze it. So just something to be aware of. And then this was also in that package. This is a little makeup brush that I ordered for doing some spider mite treatment. This is not like a special brush or anything. I ordered it because I like the color and it was pretty cheap, tends to work the best to disrupt the mite spider webbing without harming the plant. Like this is like a powder brush for your face. So it's got like really, really soft bristles, even though it's like a really cheap one. These little screens to go in the bottom of your plant pots. It's a 50 pack for like $5. Oh, these have really big holes. These are a little bit of a bigger hole screen than I had anticipated. 
Anyway, I'm gonna keep these because you can always use these, but I got these to put in the bottom of pots to stop so much of the soil from coming out. Um, I normally use little bits of cheesecloth if I'm gonna do that, but I ran out of cheesecloth and thought I would order some actual screens, but this is a much bigger hole than cheesecloth. So you can just keep that in mind. Oh, yay. Hooray, another one of these little moss bath rugs. I'm obsessed with these and I want them all over my entire house. There should be more of them in these boxes. I ordered a whole bunch. I showed these in a repotting video kind of recently, I was sitting on one in the video and I think you guys kind of like them. Anyway, they went on sale on Amazon. They were like 20 bucks a piece and there's one that's twice the size, which was also only like $25. So I ordered a couple of them. Woo. Here they are. <laughs> All right. <laughs> these two are both the same product. Oh, I'm so obsessed with these. I love them. I wish they made them even bigger. You know what? Actually, they do. I, I ordered some really expensive ones. They were like $120 a piece or something. And I think I actually like these cheaper ones more. Um, I'm coming over here to show you one of my more expensive ones. They're bigger, so I kept them, but realized the, the awesome value of the smaller version because I just like it so much more. So this is the, um, the big one that I got. It's got more yellows in it and whites. And then this is the new one that I just unboxed. See how they're kind of different? This one was $25 and this one was 115. And honestly, I'd go with this one. Um, I'm keeping this one because I ordered so many of these that I like that there's a little bit of variety and this one's different. I'm obsessed with these moss rugs. They're like my new aesthetic. Hooray! Um, <laughs> so yeah, I'm not, I'm not gonna just leave them all in a pile over here. Okay. Oh yeah, okay, this is the, this is the only non-plant stuff in my order. A little Bluetooth keyboard for my iPad because I've been doing a lot more work on my iPad these days. Ooh, I think it's big enough that I can fit my iPad and my phone. Anyway, this had good reviews on Amazon. I've been eyeing it for a while. Glad to have it now. These, I've been on a stationary ordering kick recently. I love stationary. I've been in like a total hole of ordering <laughs> sticky notes. So this is my latest sticky note order. <gasps> oh, wow, there's so many of these. They're so cute. You know, anyway, this was only like six bucks and this is, four, five, 10, 12 little different sticky notepads. Okay. Oh, yay, okay. This is the good stuff. This is the stuff I've been waiting for. So this electric spray gun is the tool that I've been needing to do my spider mite and pest treatment. Um, I actually ordered one of these a while ago and then it broke pretty quickly so I shopped around till I found a different one with way better reviews, an electric rechargeable spray gun. Um, it's an alternative to the pressurized sprayers. You can stick the end of this tube into any container you want and then use this as a battery powered sprayer that will spray out of this nozzle. This, we're gonna have to figure out how to set this up in a second. Okay, I'm gonna put this aside. And then this in here in bubble wrap. Okay, so this, <laughs> this is a weird watering can and it was $35. I'm not super impressed. Um, I might return this. It's like silver plastic, you know what I'm saying? I thought this was just gonna be way nicer. You can see the seams. Hmm. All right, sorry guys, I'm kind of disappointed in this one. I thought this was gonna be the coolest watering can ever. Why do I feel like it's just not that nice? It looks cool though, right? I mean, does it look cool? Like if I just had this sitting out on my counter, would it look cool? I don't know if I like this or if I am going to return it. I have to, I have to stare at this for a little bit. I guess I should try it. Try it out. I'm going to fill it up with some water.
Oh, it's kind of nice. <sighs> okay, I don't know what just happened, but I really enjoyed pouring out of this, so maybe I'm gonna keep it. I kind of like this. I feel like I could just reach pretty far with, into my plant collection and tip this in there. Although I don't know if it's like, if the design of it makes it pour really fast, but I think the hole is so small that it doesn't like jut out the way that I thought it would. I thought it maybe would like burst. Okay, well this is a half gallon watering can and if you're interested, I'll link it in my Amazon shop. When I look at what I'm filming, it looks fancy, but in person it's a little bit cheap looking. All right. Quench the thirst of your plants without spilling. <laughs> okay, let's see what's in here. Fancy. Ooh la la. Okay, I ordered this weird watering can that doesn't have a handle because I thought it would look aesthetic. I ordered a bunch of watering cans, but do you like this? What do you think about this? Is this weird or is it is it cool? It comes in gold too, but I ordered the silver one because it kind of reminds me of my coffee press. <laughs> I like that. I realized that I need way more watering cans because I <laughs> I'm an underwaterer and it helps me if I have watering cans next to every single sink so that I can just grab it and water my plants. Normally I'll go for like a cup or whatever is nearby. So I realized that I should treat myself to some watering cans and make sure that I have at least one watering can near every sink. And then I've got, oh, this is so sad. I've got a little muzzle for my dog. He really likes to eat dandelions. Like I think he's, he's specifically looking for the yummy salad outside and we can't get him to stop eating weeds. So, um, and around in my neighborhood, they use herbicides to kill the weeds around here. And so I just really don't want him eating the weeds. So I got him this world's tiniest little muzzle and I feel so sad thinking about putting this on him. Beneficial for him in the end if this works. Weird. There's another bottle inside here. Tamper Evernint sticker that peels off. Okay, let's open this. Oof, smells like alcohol. Um, okay, so. This is a liquid form of mosquito bits, Bacillus thuringiensis. This is the, um, the product that you use that I've always recommended to get rid of fungus gnats, not in this particular form. I usually use, I think I have them right here. These mosquito bits, which is um, like a topical little granule that you put on the top of your soil. They also make pellets that are called like mosquito dunks, which is like a little donut of dehydrated powdery stuff that you can put into your watering containers. And as it dissolves, it releases this, this uh, bacillus. So bacillus thuringiensis, this is a type of biological control that is a type of bacteria that is super toxic to certain types of flies, mosquitoes and fungus gnats. So this in terms of pesticides is pretty safe for other types of animals. This is a six ounce bottle and you only need to add in like one drop into each gallon of water that you use to water your plants. At least that's the measurement that, this, that I've seen people saying to use with this product. Um, it was only $20 or something for this whole bottle. I'm really excited to try this out. I'm like having a total fungus gnat outbreak in my, my house right now. The other day, my husband came out of his office from a meeting telling me that he was like choking on a fungus gnat while he was trying to present something. <laughs> anyway, I've got to take care of the fungus gnat situation in my house right now because things have gotten kind of bad. Wow, this is cute. I told you guys I ordered a whole bunch of watering cans, right? So this is the third one. Wow, this is so aesthetic. I love the way this looks. Yay, I might just leave this one out in my kitchen. This might become my new kitchen watering can. Isn't this pretty? Wow, I love this. This is like a some kind of 
powder coated metal. These do start to rust eventually. Um, so just don't leave it with water standing in it all the time. Wow, this is cute. I love this. It's, it's hefty. Although I prefer a light watering can. This is already pretty heavy to begin with. So just a warning if you're somebody who's looking for something really lightweight, this might not be the watering can for you. On the other hand, this one weighs like nothing. So if you're looking for a stylish light watering can, you might want to look at this one. I think it comes in black, but it was out of stock when I ordered this. This is my favorite thing. I'm excited to show this to you. I realized that I need to talk about this product. I use it all the time. I ordered, I don't like 12 of these or something. These are Kim wipes. This is a product that I've had around my whole life and I've just always taken for granted. And I realized that most people don't know what this is because it's a science product. So everyone in my life, my parents and my husband, everyone, they're all in science or medicine. My parents are doctors and my husband is a science uh, researcher. He's doing really cool cancer research. And I went to a really science focused school growing up before college and these were in every single classroom. These Kim wipes are like a little type of of tissue, but they are what scientists use to clean lab equipment, like to dry it off because they don't leave any lint. So the consistency of these towels is like almost like paper a little bit, but it's much softer. And I use these for cleaning my glasses, for wiping down glassware, um, for wiping down plant leaves if you don't want to leave lint behind. And mainly I use these for makeup purposes. Like um, it's so nice that it doesn't leave lint. Like you can dab this in your eyeball and it doesn't get any lint in there. Um, <laughs> love, love, love Kim wipes. I keep a box of these in like pretty much every room. I am not sponsored by this product. The ultimate wipe. I normally don't order this much stuff on Amazon at once. Ooh, okay, this is the one. Do you see this? <gasps> wow. I'm gonna use this to wipe down plants. Do you see how big this brush is? It's like literally bigger than my face. What do they call this? A neck duster brush for like a barber when you, when you get your hair cut and they need to brush all the little end bits of hair off of you. Anyway, I figured I could use this for spider mite treatment because this was like the biggest, softest brush I could find um, that was still pretty cheap. Like I think this was like $6 or something. And I got this one too. There should be one more. I bet it's in my mailbox. Woo, another giant brush. Okay, so I've got all my brushes now. One of the reasons why it's so hard to get rid of spider mites is because they will go in all of the crevices and will hide and form little webs that protect them. And sometimes even when you wipe with a towel, you can't get into those crevices very easily unless you like use your nail or something like that. So brushes are a really good idea. The only thing that you really need to keep in mind with the brushes is that you have to like only use one brush per plant and then you need to clean it before you put it on another plant, especially if you do think that there are spider mites present. And I feel like spider mites could probably live in here for a little while, um, maybe longer than you'd think. And so I was trying to look up methods for cleaning this. Um, if you could just dunk this in alcohol. And when you look up these kind of barber brushes, they're not legal in some states in barber shops because they're so difficult to clean, which is crazy. I did not expect to come across <laughs> results like that. But when I think about that, that's the same suspicion I was having, which made me look up like the best methods for cleaning these kind of brushes. And apparently they're pretty much impossible to clean. I have to like devise a plan for how to use these more effectively than what I was going to recommend. I realized that I would like to refine it before I tell you what to do. So I'm going to figure out how I'm going to approach my spider mite treatment this year. If you have questions about spider mite treatment, leave them in this video because I'm, I'm working on my spider mite thing right now and we will figure out some methods to conquer the mites together. I've never been like an aesthetic watering can person because anything can be a watering can as long as it can hold water. So I feel really excited to be spending a little bit of money on some aesthetic watering cans because I feel like having this kind of thing makes the whole plant care experience more enjoyable and I feel like I, I deserve some nice watering cans. So I'm excited to have these. If you have like a favorite watering can brand or like, I don't know, I guess I've never paid attention to watering cans. If you have a cool watering can thing you want to tell me about, I would love to hear from you. I will put links to everything in the video description. This has been fun for me to open up this many packages. I like never open this many boxes at once. It was like Christmas today. But yeah, thank you for watching. I hope that you enjoyed watching me just like open up some stuff. Maybe I'll do this more often if you like it. Let me know if you enjoyed this. Thank you so much for joining me. I hope that you are having a fantastic planty week and that your plants are bringing you joy. And I hope to catch you in the next one. Bye. Oh, <laughs>